everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of our listeners are using the Horlicks breakfast plan. You know the one I mean, the Horlicks malted milk, hot or cold, in the place of tea or milk or coffee. Besides being a delicious welcome change, Horlicks makes a fine, healthful beverage for the whole family. A valuable addition to the diet. A cup full of Horlicks often supplies all the nourishment that one wants for breakfast. That's because of the vitamins and minerals this famous food drink contains. In addition, Horlicks is so much easier to digest that it keeps you feeling fit and alert all day. If you haven't any Horlicks in the house, get a package from your druggist and serve Horlicks for breakfast tomorrow. You have a choice, you know, of two flavors, either natural or chocolate. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Lum uncovered the evidence that won the lawsuit Squire Skimp brought against them, he has decided he's quite a legal mind. In fact, he plans to open up a law office in Pine Ridge and has found a client already. Yesterday, upon learning that a horse had broken into Miss, Mrs. Luther Phillips's garden, he advised her to bring suit for damages against the owner only to learn later that it was his own horse. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at the Jotham Down store, seated at his desk, completely surrounded with law books. Abner is just entering. Listen. Now, uh, where have you been? Oh, I just over to the picture sofa. Me and Cedric. Have you and Cedric been running them pictures again just for yourselves? Or no, what? we ain't been running a picture. I uh, just writing on the blackboard out in front what we're going to have at the show tonight. Well, I wrote it on there myself last night. Yeah, I know, but the rain washed it off, too. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the rain. Yeah. Did Cedric get the show trip out good? Yeah, yeah, it's already. He uh, went over to the blacksmith shop to help his paw for a while. Uh-huh. I, I seen Squire Skimp just now, Lom. Well, <laughs> I ain't saw Squire since his trial Friday. What do you have to say? Nothing. He never even spoke. Just walked right by me. I said, howdy, Squire. And he just ignored me. <laughs> still mad about losing that lawsuit, I reckon. Yeah, well, he's still making his brag. Says he's going to get even with it. Yeah, Mose Moose was telling me he was in the barbershop yesterday saying he weren't done with us yet. Well, he, he can't turn around and sue us again now, can he? Oh, no. No, the case has done been sold out of court. Yeah. He's just talking. Uh, that great. Yeah, it looks like he'd have learned by this time. He's up again a couple of fellas. It's just a little too smart for him. Or one of us, anyway. One of us? Yeah. Well, now, you're just as smart as far as too long. You're just too modest about bragging on yourself. Well, I wasn't. I never married nothing. No, say, it just looks like that we've got Squire headed off anyway time. Yeah, he used to always get the best of it. Yeah. I'm just now catching on how to handle that fella. I bet he is aggravated over the way that trial come out. Here, just the day before the trial, we was trying to give him a third interest in the picture show to settle a case out of court, and he wouldn't do it. No, no, he thought he had the same one. Yeah. He never stopped to think what a terrible hand I was when it comes to law matters. Of it. No. Are you still aiming on opening up your law office? Well, I don't know. I about just decided to stick to the picture show and the store business. Yeah. Well, what you got all them law books out there on the desk for a Oh, I was just looking up some statutes here. Looks like I sort of got myself into it just the advising Mrs. Phillips to bring suit again on owner of that horse that broke into her garden. Uh, has she found out that it was your horse yet? No, and she ain't going to neither if I can help it. What I'm trying to do now is study up how I can talk her out of bringing suit. Yeah. yeah I spent 15 minutes yesterday afternoon talking her into it. Now I've got to get out of it some way. Well, I'd just call her up and tell her that it was your horse and... You can't bring suit again yourself, Mom. She'll understand that. Yeah, that's her trouble. I'm sure she will understand that. Oh. You'll have to turn it over to some other lawyer, and he'll bring the suit. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, she's aiming on getting a lot of money out of it, all right, for when I went over there after the horse yesterday afternoon, why, she said she was glad that it broke in, that Mr. Edwards is going to collect a lot more damages than the stuff was worth for her. Yeah, I ought to have found out whose horse it was before I subjected bringing suit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you talked her right into it yourself, Lon. She'd have never thought about it if you hadn't brought it up. What all did I tell her she could sue him for? Oh, Lord, me, I don't recollect what all you did say. 
violating the stock law and assaulting batteries. Of course, the horse kicked at her, you know. Mm. Said you could make them pay for all the damage that he'd done to her garden and make them build her a new fence. Oh, my goodness. I don't know Did why. I say all them things sure now? Yeah, you sure did, Lam. I sat right here and listened to you. I'm too good a lawyer, you know it. Too good. Yeah, that's my trouble. I study up too many charges to get a man on. Take the average lawyer, he wouldn't have thought of nothing except maybe violating a stock law or something like that. No. Been satisfied with it. Yeah. That's why I say I've got a sure enough legal mind. Here I've got enough charges to my I send myself to the penitentiary for the rest of my life. Unless I can talk her out of it. Well, why don't you just swap the horse off before she finds out who it belongs to? I don't think that'd be no good. She'd know the horse if she'd seen it. If she ever seen somebody driving him down the street, why, she'd more likely jump on them about it. Yeah. Then they'd tell her where they got him at. Natural, natural. I think I'll just telephone her up and tell her I looked up the law on it, and I advise her not to bring suit. Tell her she ain't got no grounds for a key. <laughs> she ought to take her own lawyer's advice, or. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's a good way out of it. Why don't you just call her, Lum? That's a good idea. Ain't hurt nothing, no one. Why, no. Yeah, what's her ring? Uh, I believe it's uh, three shorts. I ain't for sure, Lum, but I believe that's what it is. Try that anyway. And it's a good thing that Luther and I got home before I took that horse away from her. He'd have known who it belonged to. Yeah, I would have been a goner sure enough if he'd ever put Hello? Miss Phillips? Well, I weren't for sure whether this was your ring or not. This is Lum Edwards, your lawyer. Yes, Mom. Why, I called you up about that case. I've been looking up the statutes on that. Uh, statutes. The law. Yes, Mom. And I can't see where you can sue a man for something his horse done. And, of course, it wouldn't do no good to sue the horse. Oh, he ain't got that. Now, if it had been me that, I mean, if it had uh, been the owner of the horse that broke in and had up your garden, we'd have it. Oh, no, man, going to eat all this. You're sure it was the horse, ain't you? Uh-huh. I know. I went after him, Mom. I know it was a horse. Well, my advice to you as your counsel is to just draft the charges. Well, I've looked up the law careful, and I can't see no grounds for divorce or suit. Well... I'd rather just turn down the case altogether and to take something to court that way that I know we ain't got a chance to win. Uh, wait, you do what? By the way, you don't want her to win. Well, I don't think that'd do no good. I can handle it just as good as any other lawyer for head goes, but... Well, you're just wasting your time, I can tell you that. Well, now, when I said yes to you not to let nobody talk you out of it, I never meant me. I meant anybody else. Well, of course, I can't keep you from it, but it... Hello? Hello? Hmm. Now I got myself into it. What's the matter? There's a stubbornness one woman I ever seen in my life. How Luther puts up with her is more than I can see. Hey, what'd she say, Lon? Why, she's going to hire some other lawyer to handle a case for her. Oh, my goodness, Lon, you air into it now, so enough. You've got huh? to head her off before she finds out whose horse that was. We have. Well, we just get out here in the road and stop her when she comes by, then. That's I all. ain't talking about that kind of head and all. Oh. Well, you've got to help me out of this. Come here and call her up and tell her you know who the horse belongs to and you don't think she ought to bring suit. Tell her that I know who the horse belongs to. Yeah, but don't tell her who. Well, what if she asks me? Just make out like you don't hear her. Well, now, Lom, I don't want to get mixed up in this thing. You ain't going to get mixed up in it. All you got to do is just tell her you know the owner of the horse and tell her what a fine man he is, He's upright and honest in all his dealings, and does right for his feller man. And well, I thought the horse belonged to you. It does. That's who I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, you, you just want me to tell her all that so that it'll sort of throw her off a track to where she can't guess who it is, huh? No. Just tell her that and hurry up before she gets hold of another lawyer. Here, I'll ring it for you. Three shorts. Here, take the receiver. Hello? Miss Phillips? Wait a minute. She ain't there yet. Oh. Danny, this has learned me a lesson, all right. If all lawyers had the charges brung again themselves, if they try to get their clients to bring again somebody else, they'd put a stop to a heap of this lawsuit, didn't it? Yeah. She said hello, Rob. Well, go ahead and talk to her. Hello? Hello? She just keeps saying hello. Well, ask her what you want, or ask her if it's Miss Phillips. Well, I know that's who it is. I know her voice. Well, say something to her then before she hangs up the receiver. Go ahead and tell her about this man that owns the horse. What a fine man he is. Hello, uh, Miss Phillips. Uh, this here is Abner Peabody. Yes, Mom. 
Well, I just thought I'd call you up and, and tell you that I know that fella that broke in your garden yesterday. Or, I mean, I know the fella that owned that horse that broke in there. Oh, for goodness. Yes, Mom. Well, he's an awful fine man. Yes. Upright and honest and all that stuff. <laughs> Mom? You know, no one man ain't going to help your garden none, but he want me to call you up and tell you that. Tell her I'm married and got a big family depending on me, and if she sues me, my poor little children will have to go hungry. Yeah, well, I'm to tell you he's married now and got a big family of children depending on Don't tell her it's me. Tell her I'm, oh, for goodness sake. Now, who is it's married? Lord? Nobody. Wait a minute. Huh? For goodness sake. Wait a minute. Lana's changed his mind about it. Says now he ain't married. Oh, Miss for Phillip. goodness sake. Give me that receiver. Oh, I told her just what you told me. Hello, Miss Phillips. This is your attorney again. Mom? Well, I don't know what he's talking about, neither. I think he's out of his head. He has spells, you know. I don't know. I'm not bad. Yes, Mom, might be the son. Well, I had a long talk with the man that horse belongs to, and I believe I've got him scared into settling this case out of court. Well, he never said for sure, but I believe he's willing to pay for what the horse is. Oh. Well, I don't know. I never had no idea the horse done that much damage. I believe I can get him to pay you $10 cash, though, if you want to settle for that. Well, all right, fine. <laughs> I'll mail you my check, or I'll send you over the money this afternoon, then. <laughs> all right, Miss Phillips. Not at all. Goodbye. <laughs> How's that for using psychology? You mean that you're going to give her $10 just for what little batch of vegetables that horse ate up? Well, it ain't going to cost me nothing. I'm going to send her $10, all right, get her to sign a release, but I'm going to send her a bill for $10 for handling the case for <laughs> container fees. I'll break even anyway. And from here out, somebody else can handle the law matters here in Pine Ridge. I'm too with right? And another of Lum's air castles comes tumbling down. And now... Here's something special for all the young folks who listen to Lum and Abner. Next time you have friends in, ask Mother to give them a real treat by serving Horlicks malted milk. Horlicks is just the thing for parties. You can serve it cold, you know, cool and refreshing. All Mother has to do to mix the powder thoroughly with water or milk, and then put it in the refrigerator, ready for the evening. It won't take her but a minute to mix up a pitcher full and say how your friends will go for Horlicks. Tell Mother she can get a package at the drugstore in either natural or chocolate flavor, whichever you prefer. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at this same time.